Hi everybody, hope you're doing okay. It's Miss O'Connor here and today I'm going to be reading a little bit of Gangster Granny by David Walliams. Chapter 1. Cabbagey Water. But Granny is so boring, said Ben. It was a cold Friday evening in November and as usual he was slumped in the back of his mum and dad's car. Once again he was on the way to stay the night at his dreaded Granny's house. All old people are. Don't talk about your granny like that, said Dad weakly. His fat stomach pushed up against the steering wheel of the family's little brown car. I hate spending time with her, protested Ben. Her TV doesn't work. All she wants to do is play Scrabble and she stinks of cabbage. In fairness to the boy, she does stink of cabbage, agreed Mum, as she applied some last-minute lip liner. You're not helping, wife, muttered Dad. At worst, my mother has a very slight odour of boiled vegetables. Oh, can't I come with you, pleaded Ben. I love ball, was it, dancing? He lied. It's called ballroom dancing, corrected Dad. And you don't love it. You said, and I quote, I would rather eat my own bogeys than watch that rubbish. Now, Ben's mum and dad loved ballroom dancing. Sometimes Ben thought they loved it more than they loved him. There was a TV show on Saturday evenings that mum and dad never missed called Strictly Stars Dancing, where celebrities would be paired with professional ballroom dancers. In fact, if there was a fire in their house, a mum could either save a sparkly gold tap shoe once worn by... Flavio Favlioli, the shiny tanned dancer and heartbreaker from Italy, who appeared on every series of the hit TV show, or her only child, Ben. Ben thought she'd probably go for the shoe. Tonight, his mum and dad were going to an arena to see Strictly Stars dancing live on stage. I don't know why you don't give up on this pipe dream of becoming a plumber, Ben, and think about dancing professionally, said mum her lip liner scrawling across her cheek as the car bounced over a particularly bumpy speed bump. Mum had a habit of applying makeup in the car, which meant she often arrived somewhere looking like a clown. Maybe, just maybe, you could end up on Strictly, added Mum excitedly. Because prancing round like that is stupid, said Ben. Mum whimpered a little and reached for a tissue. You're upsetting your mother. Now, just be quiet, please, Ben. There's a good boy, replied Dad firmly. Inevitably, a Strictly CD was playing. Fifty golden greats from the hit TV show was emblazoned on the cover. Ben hated the CD, not least because he'd heard it a million times. In fact, he heard it so many times, it was like torture. Ben's mum worked at the local nail salon, Gail's Nails. Because there weren't many customers, Mum and the other lady who worked there, unsurprisingly called Gail, spent most days doing each other's nails. Buffing, cleaning, trimming, moisturising, coating, sealing, polishing, filing, lacquering, extending and painting. They were doing things to each other's nails all day long, unless Flavio Favioli was on daytime TV. That meant Mum would always come home with extremely long, multicoloured plastic extensions on the end of her fingers. Ben's dad, meanwhile, worked as a security guard at the local supermarket. The highlight of his 20-year career thus far was stopping an old man who had concealed two tubs of margarine down his trousers. Although dad was now too fat to run away from any robbers, he could certainly uh, block their escape. Dad met Mum when he wrongly accused her of shoplifting a bag of crisps, and within a year, they were married. The car swung around the corner into Grey Close, where Granny's bungalow squatted. It was one of a whole row of sad little homes, mainly inhabited by old people. The car came to a halt, and Ben slowly turned his head towards the bungalow. Looking expectantly out of the living room window was Granny, waiting, waiting. She was always waiting by the window for him to arrive. How long has she been there? thought Ben. Since last week? Ben was her only grandchild, and as far as he knew, 
No one else ever came to visit. Granny waved and gave Ben a little smile, which his grumpy face just about permitted him to reluctantly return. Right, one of us will pick you up tomorrow morning around 11, said Dad, keeping the engine running. Can't you make it 10? Ben, growled Dad. Dad released the child lock and Ben grudgingly pushed the door open and stepped out. Ben didn't need the child lock, of course. He was 11 years old and hardly likely to open the door when the car was running. He suspected his dad only used it to stop him from diving out the car when they were on the way to Granny's house. Clunk! Went the door behind him as the engine revved up again. Before he could even ring the bell, Granny opened the door. A huge gust of cabbage blasted in Ben's face. It was like a great big slap of a smell. She was very much your textbook granny. White hair, a hearing aid, thick glasses, false teeth, a hairy chin, mauve cardigan, a used tissue tucked up her sleeve, the smell of cabbage, a floral pink dress, tanned tights, a packet of mints close by, and burgundy slippers. Are mummy and daddy not coming in? She asked, a little bit crestfallen. Well, that means sad. This was one of the things Ben couldn't stand about her. She was always talking to him like he was a baby. Rum, 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 rum. Together, Granny and Ben watched the little brown car race off, leaping over the speed bumps. Mum and Dad didn't like spending time with her more than Ben did. It was just a convenient place to dump him on a Friday night. Um, no, sorry, Granny, spluttered Ben. Oh, well... Come in then, she muttered. Now, I've set up the scrabble board for and for your tea, I've got your favourite cabbage soup. Ben's face dropped even further. No, he thought. And that is chapter one. Wow, I enjoyed that. Didn't you? Thank you for listening. It looks like they're going to be getting up to more mischief, doesn't it? I hope you have a great rest of your day and thank you and goodbye.